Hey everyone, welcome back to the networking series. In this video, we're going to dive into one of the most important concepts in all of networking, the OSI model. If you've ever been curious about how different devices talk to each other over a network or how data moves from your phone to a server that's halfway around the world, well, the OSI model is here to make it all clear. By the end of this video, you'll be speaking fluent OSI and trust me, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Now let's jump right in. So what exactly is the OSI model? OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnection, and it's a conceptual framework that standardizes how data moves through a network. Think of it like a blueprint or a set of guidelines that every networking device follows to ensure they all communicate properly, no matter who made the device or what kind of network that it's on. All right, here's the deal. The OSI model breaks down data communication into seven layers, each responsible for a specific function. These layers work together like a relay race, passing the data from one layer to the next until it reaches its final destination. And the best part, each layer only focuses on its specific task. So no multitasking, no confusion. But why do we need this model in the first place? Well, imagine trying to build a computer network from scratch with every device using its own language and its own communication method. Quite frankly, that would be chaos. The OSI model standardizes that communication so that every device speaks the same language at every level. It's the reason why your smartphone can access a website hosted on a server in an entirely different country. Let's start at the bottom with layer one. This is the physical layer. And as the name suggests, this layer deals with the physical stuff, the cables, the connectors, the wireless signals. Basically, it's the layer that converts raw data into electrical signals or radio waves that can be transmitted over a network. This is where things like ethernet cables, fiber optics, and even Wi-Fi signals come into play. The physical layer is all about getting the ones and zeros from one device to another. And remember, this layer doesn't care about what the data means, it just makes sure it gets the data from point A to point B. Ever wonder why you need the right type of cable for your network? That's the physical layer in action. For example, if you're using an old Cat5 cable in a high-speed network, you're going to hit some bottlenecks because that cable can't handle the data speeds required. It's all about the hardware at this level. Now, let's move up to layer two, the data link layer. This layer is all about creating a direct link between two devices on the same network. Think of it as the layer that makes sure your messages don't get garbled in transit. It's responsible for error detection and correction, ensuring the data being sent is exactly what's received. The data link layer is divided into two sub layers, the media access control or MAC and logical link control or LLC. The MAC sublayer manages how devices on the same network segment access the network while the LLC ensures the data is sent and received correctly. If you've ever heard of MAC addresses, this is where they come into play at layer two. Imagine you're at a party and you want to send a message to your friend across the room. The data link layer makes sure that your message doesn't get mixed up with someone else's. It's like giving your friend a direct connection to you so they only hear what you're saying, even if other people are talking all around you at the same time. Now we're stepping up to layer three, the network layer. This layer handles routing, deciding where your data needs to go and figuring out the best path to get it there. It's like the GPS of the network, ensuring your data takes the fastest and most efficient route to its destination. The most famous protocol at this layer is easily IP. Yep, as in IP address. Every device on a network needs an IP address to send and receive data. The network layer breaks data into packets, addresses those packets, and routes them to their destination. And if necessary, it fragments and reassembles them along the way. Have you ever tried to send a huge file over the internet only to notice it gets broken into smaller pieces before being reassembled at the other end? That's layer three at work, making sure your data gets to the right place in the right order. 
All right, up next is layer four. This is the transport layer, and this one is all about reliability. The transport layer is responsible for breaking data into segments, ensuring those segments are sent in the right order, and reassembling them at the destination. This is where protocols like TCP and UDP come into play. TCP, also known as the Transmission Control Protocol, makes sure every segment of data arrives intact, even if that means resending parts of the message that may have got lost along the way. It's like sending a package and getting a receipt when it's delivered safely. UDP, on the other hand, is a bit faster, but doesn't bother with acknowledgements. It's great for streaming, where speed matters more than perfection. Think of this layer as a delivery service. TCP is like FedEx, where every package is tracked and guaranteed to arrive, while UDP is like sending postcards fast, but you may not know if they got there. Moving up, we have layer five, the session layer. This layer manages sessions between devices. When two devices wanna communicate, the session layer establishes a connection, maintains it during the conversation, and then closes it or tears it down when they're done. Ever had a video call that drops suddenly? That's a problem at the session layer. It's responsible for maintaining a stable connection so your data can flow without interruption. If the session gets interrupted, this layer helps to restore it or gracefully ends it. In simple terms, the session layer is like a phone call between two friends. It opens the call, it keeps the line active while they chat, and then hangs up when they're done talking. Next up, Layer six, the presentation layer. And this is where data gets translated, compressed, or encrypted. Think of it as the translator of the OSI model. It ensures that the data sent by one device is in a format that the receiving device can understand. This layer takes care of any data formatting or encryption that's needed, whether it's converting a JPEG image into a format that your web browser can display or encrypting data for secure communication. It ensures that no matter what format the data starts in, it's properly presented at the other end. If you've ever downloaded a file only to have it open in the wrong program, that is an issue at the presentation layer where the data wasn't presented in a format your system could understand. Finally, we reach the top, the application layer number seven. This is the layer closest to the end user, and it's what you interact with directly. It includes things like web browsers, email clients, and even file transfer programs. Now the application layer doesn't refer to the applications themselves, but rather to the protocols that allow these applications to communicate over the network. For example, HTTP, FTP, SMTP all live here ensuring that your data gets from the app on your device to the app on the receiving device. So let's recap. The OSI model is made up of seven layers, each handling a different part of data communication, from the physical layer that deals with the hardware, all the way up to the application layer, which interfaces with the user. Together, these layers ensure data can travel across the network smoothly, no matter the devices or the networks that are involved. Next time, we're diving into IP addressing, how your device gets its unique address on a network and why it's essential for the internet to function. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.